shortbread cookie, a pinwheel, which has just gotten better with age. I made these about a week ago. And delicious. Not delicious. When I'm playing this back, the volume sounds just fine. So, automatic. You're out of practice. All right, that's neither here nor there. Should I make this a fourth time? Why not? The 30th of the... Blah, blah. No, I'm probably going to start again. Hello, welcome to Fibertown. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Fibertown. This is episode 227. It's the 30th of December, 2018. Welcome to my kitchen. I have lots of fibery things to share with you. It's been about a month since we chatted and I've been making things. So it's the end of 2018 and I'm not going to do a year in review or plan my year ahead. It's just not what inspires me. But chatting with you all, getting feedback on what I've shown you and um, inspiration from you all is what drives me to do this. Uh, so I welcome your comments, your questions on YouTube in the Ravelry group, etc. Uh, I'm just really glad you're here and I want to say thanks. There are a few giveaways to talk about today, which is a rare occurrence these days. The first one is um, the Penny Pearls sweater. And I chose a random number on the YouTube comments from the previous episode and the person who won a free pattern, the Penny Pearls pattern, um, by Davisca is Farm to Needle. So Farm to Needle, get in touch with me on Ravelry. And, uh, or actually, no, get, on touch, get in touch with me on YouTube. And uh, I'll make sure you get that pattern. Isn't that lovely? Yes, I see you. Would you like to come up? Come on, come on, baby. Can you not do it? So my whole, my whole family is here. And just when I sat down to press record, they all decided to descend on the kitchen, even though I told them to stay away. Um, and now I finally got some peace. I had to record this intro maybe eight times, and now the dog's jumping on me. All right, come here. Every time I turn around to look at her, she's kind of like, what? I didn't say anything. This is Alice. Alice had a very nice Christmas. She got a couple new toys, didn't she? Do we look alike? All right, you're good now. You go down. So besides that giveaway, just laughing at my, my podcasts are ridiculous. Besides that giveaway, uh, we have a cal going on. It's hand spun winter. And um, I also picked a prize from the Ravelry thread. Um, so I picked a random number. I don't remember what the random number was, but the winner was it's going to win this. These are hobbledehoy Middle Earth Batlings. The winner was my wool mitten. Who is Carrie? So Carrie, I hope you like these. They are organic Polworth teal. Teal? Te oh, teal and espresso bamboo. That's the color of the bamboo. Um, there's no glitter. And I may have spun like one and a half of these, but the rest are for you if you'd like them. So get in touch. And that's the hand spun, hand spun winter cal make along really. Any sort of craft qualifies um, to enter this. So just make something with hand spun. It can be your hand spun. It can be someone else's. You can spin hand spun. It's a very easy going cal, as are all of my cals, because I'm not interested in making rules for people. We have enough of those, don't we? Anyway, I will be drawing more prizes for Hand Spun Winter, and it goes through the end of winter, so sometime in March. And um, I will show you what I'm knitting for Hand Spun Winter later on. But let me show you FOs first. Did I do everything I was supposed to? Okay. <sighs> I knit a pair of socks for my husband. He's worn them and washed them once already. They are a Regia. Is this an Arnie and Carlos? I don't know. I don't have the ball band anymore. Some of the uglier socks I've knit in my life. 
and according to Ravelry, I've knit over 80 pairs of socks. I'm pretty good at keeping track of my projects on Ravelry. Um, not my stash, but my projects, yes. I don't really put a lot of details in my projects usually, but I do have a record of what I've made, which is something. It's not nothing. So I also, in the Advent season, decided to knit several hats. Um, my family, they're all hat worthy. So I knit three hats for my, my near and dear. Uh, the first was out of some Harrisville, um, what's it called? Nightshades. It's a Cormo blend and it's a black base with colors mixed in, in the, um, what do you call it? Words are not my friend today. I don't know why. But um, this is the dashboard colorway. They're dyed in the wool. So, oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Dyed in the wool and all of the wool, the black in the color is um, mixed together before the spinning. So this is for my daughter. She's just had to steal it off her head as she came in from, her, from a walk. And this I just stole off my son's head. This is out of Illimani. Do we have a tag somewhere for this? I just made up a slip stitch pattern with um, yeah, some degree of success in terms of the decreases. They're a little wonky, but I don't mind. This is an alpaca merino silk blend, I think, and it's got a tube construction. Can you see that? Probably. So it made the slip stitch stand out very nicely, and it's, he, he's been wearing the heck out of that. Now this I made for my husband, but then I decided to keep it. Because <laughs> as, he, as he said to me, I can make my own hats. So I made this one, and I adore it. Sh I'm shocked that I adore it because it's 100% alpaca. I bought this in Oregon when I went to visit my friend Mary Lee Harris. I don't know why I say her full name. Um, she is an artist. You can find her on uh, Instagram, Mary Lee Harris Art. So maybe I just say her full name because I just think of her Instagram. But uh, she took me to an alpaca farm near her home in Oregon. And I bought the skein. And since then, I've kind of considered yarn with alpaca in it as a bummer. <laughs> I think I've said that before. And I don't know, this one is just great. I knit the brim at a really tight gauge for me um, because I know the alpaca drapes and stretches and doesn't bounce back. So I felt like the brim needed to really sort of suck in and stay that way. So it's pretty good. And the rest of the hat is just so drapey. It's got a natural slouch. So just a very basic, I think, Maybe 116 stitches. This is like a sport to DK. More on the DK side. Um, the rest of these, I think this was an 88 stitch cast on, and this might have been... I don't know. Can't remember. Didn't note it in my project pages, but... Yeah, so I have a great new hat. It's very warm, again, because alpaca. And so, again, for alpaca, my opportunities for wearing 100% alpaca to... Alpaca, to, alpaca are somewhat limited because of where I live, but it's been fairly cold, so um, I love that hat. Alpaca also makes really good mittens, especially if you use wool for the cuffs, so you do get that bounce back. So that's not bad, right? Four finished objects. Um, now my FOs have not changed a ton for whatever reason, and I think the, the reason really is that they're mostly sweaters. Hello friend, I'm not picking you up again. Mm. Let me show you the first one. It's the Breezy by Hannah Fettig. This is my second Breezy. It's out of St. Kilda Lace Weight. You may notice it is no longer attached to needles. Sleeves are done. Two sleeves, there's proof. Um, I had bound off the first sleeve with a tubular bind off and it looked super messy. I don't know if it's just I didn't execute it very well or that it's a lace weight yarn. 
or a combination thereof, probably. But I ripped it back and I did just a standard bind off. No ends have been woven in. And you may recall, so the breezy has waterfall fronts, so a lot of extra fabric gets knitted here. And I have two steaks in this sweater, thanks to a podcast viewer um, who helped me when I was musing over how to do this because of the construction of the sweater, you really do need two steaks. The first one is here. And really, I could have, I don't know, I could have started that first steak much higher. But anyway, I started it when I figured out how to proceed with the steaking given the construction of the sweater. So I've got the little steak up here, and I think I'm gonna cut these steaks today in video, and I'll probably put them in at the beginning. Or maybe I'll put them in right here, who knows. Hey friends, hello, hello. I am just getting ready to cut some steaks on my breezy cardigan. I have done a crocheted steak, so um, basically I have done two lines of, let me show you on this one, two lines. Of single crochet um, basically joining legs of two adjacent stitches and that just leaves this middle piece that shows you where to cut it also secures the steak um, so I think it's a really good method if you're kind of a nervous first-time steaker and yeah so you can see I'm just gonna cut right between the lines of single crochet, and then I will fold this back. I have it on my um, little ironing board so that I don't accidentally cut through the other layer of the sweater. That would be kind of a nightmare. So here we go. I'm gonna cut this first steak. I'm just gonna separate this apart so I can see. Take it slow. And ta-da! So there's the first steak cut and then it'll just fold back really nicely like that and I'll put the bands on. Now we have this one. This is going to take a little longer but again I'm just going to cut right down these bars. Can you see that? Right through those bars. Um, okay so I've used a contrast thread which is another lace weight Remember the project I used this for? I made, it's so funny, I made a, oh, what was it called? I think it was the first cardigan that sort of got Hannah Fettig going as a designer. It was an interweave knits, something like the Wispy or the Whisper cardigan. And I made it out of this water green Malabrigo lace yarn, which turned out to be a terrible idea. Um, I gave that sweater to my sister-in-law, but Think, you know it's a merino single <laughs> so it just was a really terrible idea for a sweater um, it would have made a nice shawl I think but it, it pills like nobody's business and yeah it was not a great idea I've got the steak half cut and now the dog I don't know if you can hear her she wants to come in She's jumping at the back door Alice will have to wait dude I'm steaking just using some little embroidery scissors. Taking my time. And all of, oops, well that's great filming. You can't even see what I'm doing, can you? Just pull things apart. And we're almost to the end. We're gonna have a steaked open sweater. So there's that steak right there. There we go. And that will just fold over as well. Where is that stitch where I want it to fold? There it is. Yep, it's time to do some bands. And there's the second steak. So um, I don't know yet how I'm going to deal with the steaks after they're cut. Um, I'm very interested to try what Isolde calls a steak, no, Kate Davis calls this, a steak sandwich. 
where you enclose both sides of the steak, so the underneath and the, the over the steak, um, in two layers of button band, or band in this case, because there are no buttons on the sweater. So um, it's on one of her blog posts. It's called Steak Sandwich, and I may do that. I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm going to be very careful about the yarn I have left because I had a little nugget of yarn out of my four skeins of St. Kilda left. And I'd already, I originally bought three skeins and just miscalculated yardage. I, I think on the skeins it says 700 and whatever yards per 100 grams, but I didn't, it didn't compute that these are only 50 gram skeins. So I thought I had enough, I did not. Um, I got an extra skein on a Ravelry D stash and when it became apparent that I would not have enough for the button bands, I went back to that same person who had more originally, and she had sold the rest of it. There was no one else selling it on Ravelry, so I put a shout out, and Corrine at the Woolly Thistle, where I originally bought this yarn, did have one in her own stash. And she very kindly sent it to me. So I really hope that I have enough to finish the button bands. So one band goes up each side of this front steek, and then they go all around the, the neck. The fit is great. Um, the button bands, or sorry, the, um, the ribbing bands are supposed to be three inches long. You can see I did not make them that long here. So I may not make them that long up here either, just to make sure I have enough yarn. So it's been a year knitting on this sweater. It will not be finished in 2018. So it was started December 2017, so it'll go just over a year, hopefully. I'm really ready to be done with this and wearing it. Um, the first one I made, I made out of Volmiza lace, which is, says it's lace yarn, but it's really a light fingering weight, so I didn't need as much of that yarn to, I think I used just under 1,500 yards, and this is gonna be more than that, but that's because it's a skinnier, it's a much skinnier yarn. So it's a lot of knitting in a really small, small gauge yarn. It is knit on US 6 needles, so it's a 4 millimeter needle. And I think I used a US 4 for the ribbing. And now Alice wants to go outside. Al, you stay. There have been a lot of squirrels on our patio. Um, I think they're just starting to get into their, their nut stashes that are buried nearer the house. So I think they've put a lot of their um, nuts in our sort of containers for potted plants on the patio. So I think that's what she wants to do. All right, so that's the breezy. Uh, I do have a new sock cast on. That's Zauber Paul Crazy. And this is the colorway, I don't know how to pronounce it. Jackie something. It's in my botanically printed wool felt bag. And look, I have just finished the heel gusset. This is my typical sock on my typical needles with my typical stitch count. Very, I'm very basic when it comes to socks. Um, so there we go. I'm about halfway through um, the foot, not counting the toe. Um, and I just love knitting Zauber Ball. Just love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I received some Zauber Ball for Christmas too, which I will show you in acquisitions. So for my hand spun winter, I have started working on my Rocaine sweater again. This is from Pom Pom Quarterly. It's by Christina Danae. And that, yeah, that's the front. I finished the body minus the ribbing. And I've started a sleeve, but I think I'm going to rip it out because I need to color manage that better. It's, it's pretty dark. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with that yet. 
Um, and I don't know if I like having three balls of yarn attached to this sweater at the same time, and I should probably just finish the ribbing. I kind of thought I would wait to do the ribbing until the sleeves are long enough, but maybe I should just, I don't know, I'm waffling about this. I, this could be done really quickly if I set my mind to it. And it's Hog Island hand spun, hand spun by me from a fleece from Maryland Sheep and Wool 2017. It's great stuff. So yeah, I could really finish this if I buckled down as they say. Um, it's a really fun knit. I have played around a lot with the pattern, but it's mostly just sort of, I've played around with the order of operations with of the knitting but I've mostly followed the pattern otherwise. So that's it for my works in progress, except for, I will say, my underwing mitts. Um, I took the needles out of those. I think I'm gonna start over, and I'm not, not really motivated to start over yet, so we'll see how that goes. I want them, I, I'm just not enjoying the knitting of them as much as I thought I would. I don't know, maybe it's the black and white that I'm using. Um, but I would really love to have a pair. I think they're amazing. So I'll get there eventually. The next thing I'm going to share is weaving and spinning. And let me show you my spinning first. Finished my fin spin. It's my fin spin. And this amounts to 950-ish yards of a three-ply. Oh, that's gorgeous really beautiful. Um, so yeah, this could be the body of something with um, maybe three quarter sleeves and a yoke out of something else. It's really beautiful. Um, I don't know if I'll dye it. I think that would be stunning. I would love to have like 300 more yards of it. Alas, I do not. Um, but I made a conscious decision to do a three ply. So I have fewer, fewer, less yardage, fewer yards. Now my weaving was um, on a different loom than I usually go to. And this is a loom, I think this is the very first loom I've had as an adult. And it was given to me by my friend Angie. And I didn't realize at the time that it was a tapestry loom. I don't think she realized either. Because she said, yeah, you know, you can put paper and wind around, you know, you can wind your fabric that you're making around the beam. And I couldn't figure out how to make that happen. And that's because it's not a loom that's meant for that. It is a tapestry loom. So I took some scraps and started weaving a wall hanging. It was very inspired by um, a lot of Navajo weaving I saw in Utah and Arizona this summer. Wow, you can really see the light behind it is making it look pretty um, loosely woven, especially here, but that's okay. So I took lots and lots of leftovers in this palette that I really love, which is uh, creams, browns, grays, and lavenders. I did throw in a couple little of this, which is thin roving that I dyed myself. Um, Oh, and this is also roving, so it's got some nice texture right there. I don't know if you can see. Ooh, the back. So I've played around with these little loops, which are fun to do. You just sort of um, take a knitting needle, and as you weave, you pull out some of the weft yarn into these loops. And then you weave a couple of rows and pack them down, and they stay like that. I did some over here, too, out of a variegated yarn, and I really didn't like it. I left it, but I just didn't do much of it really enjoy um, the look of this stuff here. This is like a Manos and just some scraps I had. Um, so I think I'm going to go out and get a stick in the woods and um, hang it on that. I know exactly where it's going to go. It's going to go by my piano. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just making this up as I go. I may mirror this down here, up here. Um, but I'm enjoying it a lot. And this is, again, just roving. So a couple of little Raya knots right here. 
Um, yeah, this has been on the loom for about five days, and I work on it from time to time. And I like the sort of weightiness of a lot of this, and the simplicity and the texture. So I don't have that much more to weave. I guess I need to stop at about here and tie it off. So I, I have a pickup stick in here just for one of the sheds and for the other sheds I just sort of pick up the warp threads and they need tightening. So you can see this is a tapestry loom. It's got these teeth right here where the warp threads are and then these teeth up here. I think it might be a Becca loom. It doesn't have um, tightening just right now. It doesn't have any brand on it, but it looks like a Becca, B-E-K-A, that I've seen online. So who knows? I don't think Angie's watching, but she told me I could keep it. And uh, she's an amazing crafty enabler for many years for me. So that's a lot of fun. It's not using as many scraps as I wish. I have so many scraps. I have a drawer full of just semi-used balls of yarn. But I save them and they, they do eventually get used, I hope, most of them. So, oh, so that's a nice transition to my sewing. Um, I'm wearing one of the things I've sewn, which is a Hadley top by Greenline Studio. And I will stand up and show you a bit. This is um, a double gauze from Atelier Brunette. And it has these little metallic um, embroidery on here. It's a little bit fuzzy from my weaving, I think. But this is was my fancy um, holiday top. And I really love this fabric. But it was a beast to hem, I will say. Um, so the Hadley does this thing. It's got a split back and a hook and eye closure. It's got lots of facings. And I really used a facing that's, or an interfacing rather, for the cuffs. It's way too stiff. Um, and so I changed it to a lighter interfacing. Um, for the neckline facing and the hem facing. But the hem is really shoddy. I am not happy with it. And I, it's got tunneling in places. It's just, it just was really difficult to do for some reason. And I think it was the fabric. It just shifts. Like, I will say, like, right around. Uh, you probably can't see. And I might show you something I shouldn't hear. So, you know, well, just take my word for it. Did not come out good. Um, and I do wonder if I should have done sort of a cuff finish to it. I should have done a different finish, and I still might pull it out and change it. Um, it's dark fabric. No one knows but me. I'm generally wearing this at night, so I may just leave it. We'll see. Um, it, it's okay as far as double gauze goes. It's not my favorite ever. Um, the Nanny Iro double gauze just behaves itself a little better, I feel like. Um, as well as the Cloud9 organic double gauze. I don't know how I feel about the at the Atelier Brunette double gauze. It gave me some trouble. But this metallic embroidery is a lot of fun. And I got this fabric from an online fabric store called Imagine Nats, like bug, G-N-A-T-S. Um, they had some nice, interesting fabrics. Um, my other sewing made jeans and I've been wearing them almost constantly and I'm stopping myself because what I could really do now what my impulse is is to show you my jeans and show you everything that's wrong with them and there are things that 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 are wrong with them uh, but I'm not gonna do that <laughs> the one thing I will say is that it doesn't yet have a closure And I need to rectify that. Um, so here's the back with my sashiko pockets, which are not the same. Okay, I was gonna say, I'm not supposed to say what's wrong with this. They're not the same size. I'm doing it anyway, aren't I? Can't stop myself. Um, and this is the hemp leaf, which, what does the hemp leaf symbolize in the sashiko tradition? Maybe like longevity and health. So going with that theme, um, I also embroidered this 
and I forget that this is in here, but this is sort of against like the evil eye. It's on the very back of my waistband. So I forget it's there until I take them off. And I'm like, oh, hello. But it's there protecting me. Uh, I will say the fly construction is brilliant. Did I mention that already? It's really cool. Now I tried to put in a snap for the closure. And I have heavy duty snap pliers, but they didn't do the job. So I have holes in my waistband. My waistband is lacking in finesse on these pants, I will say. I really didn't understand how it was supposed to be done. Even though I've done waistbands, couldn't wrap my mind around it. So I made it my own way. And yeah, it could be better. But it's good enough. It's kind of my new motto. Done is better than perfect. I think what I might do is do a bar closure here or find a friend who has an industrial snap machine. I do not trust my machine to do buttonholes. It's not even on quilting cotton, so denim is with interfacing is kind of out of the question. I know buttonholes are better with interfaced fabric, but it's so stressful to do buttonholes. I never know if they're gonna work out, and mostly they don't work out. So what I've been doing is safety pinning it. Maybe I'll just do that for forever. It's probably not sustainable. I could try to do a hand-sewn buttonhole and do a better job than I have in the past. Anyway, I love them. I may have to hem them some more. I ran out of this thread here, my top stitching thread, um, so I did not top stitch the hem, but it's okay. And I think that I need to shorten them anyway. Uh, they're okay as they are, but I think they could be shorter. So I made jeans and I love them and I wear them a ton. I took some FO shots and posted them on Ravelry and people loved the sweater I was wearing in the shot. So I thought I'd show that. It was the very first thing I ever steaked. I'm about to steak the third thing I've ever steaked. And this was a, a this was a true sheep to sweater project. Um yeah, this started out as yogurt, which was a Corydale uh, cross, and that was the sheep's name. So that was a fleece which I washed and processed and spun, and then I knit it into this sweater, which um, I designed, inspired by a sweater my friend Leanne had knit, which had a back pa lace panel. So I picked a lace motif from a stitch dictionary and just knit a raglan sweater with a steek up the front. And then I steeked it. I used um, a crocheted steek and just turned it over and hand sewed this very cute elephant ribbon that I bought at the Woolly Thistle. There it is. Um, and I think one thing that I hadn't planned to do on this sweater but I really love is the I-cord finish. I did it on the neckline and I had to use a different yarn. Can you tell that's different? Um, because I this was not the first project I made out of yogurt's fleece. Um, I had used a ton of this fleece and so I wasn't able to do full length um, sleeves but I did this I-cord and I ended up leaving a little gap right here at the back of the arm. You can see this is the where the sleeve increases are. Sleeve decreases rather because this was top down. And I think it's very fetching when you're wearing it. Fetching is a word we need to bring back, isn't it? Um, yeah, anyway, it it's, it's, comes to just below my elbows, and it's a great little sweater. I think it could use, I do sometimes put a shawl pin right here to close it up. I think it could use a button or a hook and eye. Um, and I did dye the yarn as well. So a lot of people were asking for the pattern. I don't have it. I made it up. Um, you can make one up too. Just get like um, the Ann Bud, Ann Bud sweater book or um, another top-down raglan. Put in a steek, maybe five or seven stitches. Uh, do a lace panel on the back. You, yeah, should be good to go. 
So, acquisitions. Where should I start? So, the very first thing I'm going to show is my Zabra ball. I got this one. This is called Piano Bar. I just love it. My friend Sarah Flanez just knit a pair and I wanted to copycat her, so I did. Um, it's got oranges and dark purples and pinks and greens. So I just love knitting Zabra balls. And I also got this. You may remember that I've already knit socks out of this colorway, which is, which is the chocolate time. I know it's that's what this colorway means. I won't try to pronounce it. So I'm going to give this away. Do you want to knit a Zauber ball? Do you want to knit a chocolate time Zauber ball? They're great socks. They wear like iron, even though they're only two ply. They're sturdy German sock yarn and they're addictive to knit. In fact, it says so on the label. Stricken can that. Knitting can be addictive. Um, leave a comment on this episode and you could win this. Um, and this is just as a thank you um, for coming to Vibertown in 2018. I'm glad you did. So um, if you want to comment and you don't want the Zauber ball, just make a note in your comment. But um, just get in touch. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're making. Let me know if you have concrete plans for 2019. As I said, I cannot make plans like that. I I was talking to some friends about the Make 9 phenomenon, and I just thinking about it, I think how I operate, if I were to do the Make 9, it would pretty much ensure that I didn't make any of those things. The way my making goes is I either do something completely on a whim, I'm in the moment and I want to do it, and I love that freedom. I do not want to be tied down to a plan for making. But that's my personality. I think they're very interesting and I like seeing what people are planning. Um, and then the other way I operate with my making is that I have ideas that percolate over sometimes years and sometimes I'm either gathering materials slowly or I'm processing ideas slowly over time and then I, when I'm ready I just I plunge into it. So Make Nine is just not for me, um, but I'd love to know what you guys are planning and you can put that in your comment on this episode. Uh, I'm so excited about my other two acquisitions. I'm going to show you my woolly one first. So Carrie at Serenity Farms, who has a new podcast, um, I've mentioned her before, go check her out, it's lovely. She had sent me some samples. I've had one of her fleeces, Hilda. Hilda is all spun up and waiting to become something. Um, but in one of the samples she sent me, I got this little skein of three-ply, beautiful cream-colored Corydale. And she called it um, Breath of Snow and Ashes. And this was years ago. And I just recently said to Carrie, you know, do you have any more of that? I would love to buy some. And what I had done with that little skein was I had dyed it with fresh indigo and it just came out gorgeous. And I love a three ply. I loved this yarn. I could just, I wanted more. So all she had was three skeins. And they're about 250 yards each. And she also threw in this guy. So a breath of snow, a breath of snow and ashes is um, one of the Outlander books. I feel like it's the sixth or seventh. So My Wool Mitten at Serenity Farms. Oh, this is actually the Dunbonnet. Again, another Outlander reference. So not only, the labels are fantastic. You get um, a quote from the books in this case, um, as well as really detailed information about where the yarn came from. So this came from Leoch. The sheep were named Leoch, Jesse, and Ginger. Coriadale and Bond. Now the white, A Breath of Snow and Ashes, again has a quote from the book. And this came from Coriadale's, it's Francie, Dawn, and Hannah. Isn't it gorgeous? I'm so happy to have this. I don't know what it will become. I also got a very cute little bat. I'm not sure what this is made of. Um, it's got some, looks like some silk in there. Or maybe not, maybe it's just dyed yarn, or fiber. 
so hopefully that won't be in my stash too long because it's very beautiful. I don't know if I'll dye it. Who knows? So the last thing I have to share with you is um, it was a pretty big Christmas gift. And I knew this was coming, and I still just, when I opened it, oohed and odd. This is Silk Charmeuse from Liberty of London. And it is in the, here's the selvage, Garden of Temptations. Uh, this is the Earthly Delights. Uh, I think this came from fabric.com, where it, it was pretty reasonably priced for a silk like this. Just an amazing silk. I've seen it on other sites completely. The price was like price gouging. Much more than I paid. I love it. I could envision this as another Hadley top with amazing drape. I have three yards. Or a bias cut dress. That would be way too much though. Can you imagine silk bias cut? Um, or the lining of an amazing jacket. So this has fruit and it has my favorite, it has um, flowers, it has, you can see the tomatoes and sort of guava and chayote looking fruits and passion flowers and lotuses and strawberries and these little carrots, beetles. And it's all very, you know, I won't say anything except that it puts me in mind of um, like Georgia O'Keeffe kind of stuff. That kind of theme. Not really the same style at all, but you see where I'm going with this, right? And there is a bumblebee on the melon. So it's very, you know, fruitful. <laughs> Earthly delights. Garden of temptations. Um, I think it's stunning. It's over the top, of course, which is why, you know, I think it would make an amazing lining. Or a blouse. Can you see me wearing this as a Hadley, like this top? But in this, it's just gorgeous. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm lucky to have it. I do know that. It's got this sort of metallic-y shine to it. Anyway, that's where we are. If you want something today, get in touch with me. And if you want to win the Zauber Ball, comment below. I hope you have a fantastic new year. I wish you all the best, and I'll see you in 2019. Take care.